The Jury Daily program brought to you as always by the folks that pay us at PayJuryDaily.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Jury Daily. We're on day two. Day two, we have we have we have we have extended our investigation of the Dire Straits song "Money for Nothing." We got some great emails, and I think I might have made a very important personal revelation about my relationship to this case. I'm going to warn you. Before we get into it, don't expect high thoughts today. We are officially moving high thoughts to Thursday. It will be the last words that you hear of me as I send you into the weekend. High thoughts will effectively end our week uh, uh, now on the Jury Daily podcast so we can build kind of a whole show around it. Uh, uh, but but today, uh, don't don't be like, oh, I'm, I'm expecting high thoughts. Don't worry. Here we go. We're going to get into this money for nothing uh, chicks for free. If you did not listen to yesterday's show for whatever reason, then understand what has happened. I posited this theory to all of you viewers and listeners that the Dire Straits song Money for Nothing and specifically its second verse. The second verse wherein our blue collar protagonist uh, points out that little F slur for gay people. I, I was also pointed out to me that not everybody knows when I say F slur, they do not know that I mean the the uh, uh, F-A-G word for gay people, the slur for gay people, the bundle of sticks. So our titular character says that little F slur uh, uh, on on the MTV, uh, uh, that little F slur has his own jet airplane. That little F slur is a millionaire. What I said to everybody yesterday was, it blows my mind that we have been through not one but two political correctness purges that has taken a lot of things that were understood in a certain way during a certain period of time out of popular rotation. And yet, and yet, despite the fact that we had one in the 90s, despite the fact that we are currently undergoing one right now, Money for Nothing is still played on classic rock radio. Or so I thought. What I found out was that apparently this has been a political issue, not here, but in Canada. Thank you to uh, 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 the folks who sent this in yesterday. This is a Rolling Stone article. I don't know when. Oh, September 1st, 2011. Uh, uh. A Canadian broadcasters can go back to playing Dire Straits' 1985 hit Money for Nothing. The Canadian Broadcast Standards Council announced yesterday that the song was pulled from national playlists in January after a single listener complained about the worst of the F-slur on Newfoundland radio station c Chaz FM, or just Chaz, I guess C-Haz, C-H-O-Z-FM. Money for Nothing was immediately deemed a breach of the Human Rights Clause of the Canadian Association of Broadcasters Code of Ethics and Equitable Portrayal Code. The decision caused public outrage in support of the classic song. So then, they flipped. They they changed. They, they said, no, 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 it's not a problematic song. Because it was understood to be irony, right? That, that and it, it is true. I mean, from from any and every available uh, uh, interpretation of it from the creators, this is the man singing the song. The song is about a blue collar workaday schlub 
watching MTV and and reacting to it, right? Uh, uh, and and as we pointed out last week, uh, Tally Zarel, yes, the 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 reference, or uh, it was a reference to Vince Neil from Motley Crue. That little F slur. So I guess he. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe he's a millionaire. The Canadian Broadcast Standards Council said it would be up to individual radio stations to decide whether or not they wanted to play the unedited version of the Dire Straits song. Money for nothing. So, I found out a couple things after we stopped talking yesterday. Here's the first. That first version of the song is eight minutes. The one with the F slur in it. Eight minutes long. Big, uh, nano, 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 nano. It has like a minute and a half intro of just the ethereal, like, minute and a half. Like eight minutes long, gigantic, right? Soon after the song hit, Dire Straits put out a Greatest Hits album that included a four-minute version. That four-minute version does not include that second verse. That little F slur, no longer a millionaire, no longer does he own his own jet airplane. So it got me thinking. Is this only played by lazy program directors or DJs whom want to just have an innings eater eight minute song in the middle of their rock block. I feel like that's the only reasonable answer. Like if you want to put on an eight minute song to go to the bathroom, you're not gonna you're not gonna run out. You're probably going to be wiping while while Sting is still going. Oh, Walmart. Oh, Walmart. Oh, Walmart. Before the before the fucking guitar even breaks in. Like that first guitar riff is coming in as you're washing your hands. <laughs> Flush. You're already back in your seat by the time that little F slur has uh, his own jet airplane. We got a bunch of emails about this, and there's a personal revelation that I want to tag on the back. Mike says, I started yesterday's episode on my way to my favorite convenience store this morning. I got to the point in the episode where you started talking about 105.9 when I arrived to pause the show. I walked in the store to get my daily drink, and lo, what was playing over the store radio? Dire Straits money for nothing. Made my purchase and I continued uh, uh, the show for nothing uh, uh, of your theory of people not registering the lyrics for what they are for many to be correct. All right, let me read that again. Made my purchase and continued the show noting that your theory of people not registering the lyrics for what they are may be correct. Personally, I've never heard the Epsler at all in the song and I've always thought that it was movies. So it's the lyrics are in in reality. We gotta move these microwave ovens. No. Yeah. Uh, custom kitchen delivery. Oh yeah. No, it's we gotta move these refrigerators. And I always thought it was we got the movies. Like what you would see that hour and a half to three hours long film, right? Mike points out that he's. Uh, by the way, if it helps, I'm white and I'm in my mid forties. Eric Wright, since you bring up money for nothing. Oh, by the way, you can always email us, jurydaily at gmail.com or leave a comment on YouTube down below. Since you bring up money for nothing and in line with your yearly dissection of It's Cold Outside, I present to you this song for examination. 
the human league, don't you want me? I'd love for you to look through these lyrics and let me know if you see anything worth giving the side eye to. My take is this. Sleazy talent manager feels entitled to sex because he made this woman a star and is pissed that she won't fuck him, agree or disagree. I don't think that there's much of a question that uh, don't you want me is aggressive by modern era. Let me just say this. I don't know if the male voice of don't you want me would be confirmed for the Supreme Court. Let's leave it there. Topical humor. I want my... Brett writes, for a few years, I worked at a, a really popular, worked for a really popular classic rock DJ. I've never heard their station play Money for Nothing, only Walk of Life or Sultans of Swing. I actually think that they're progressive enough that they'd removed it from their library. And let's be honest, both of those alternatives are better Dire Straits songs anyway. That's pretty, pretty clear. I don't think that either are as iconic Money for Nothing is the most iconic Dire Straits song. If you could only send one that would be representative of society, it would be Money for Nothing. Your inquiry about the... Your inquiry... Oh, man, I am just hitting on all cylinders today. That ain't working. <laughs> That's the way you do it. Mangle your words on the podcast length <laughs> might screw up a syllable in the first five minutes might screw up a syllable in the emails <laughs> your inquiry about this tune being played on the radio reminded me of a conversation i had with a dj last week for a beatles centric part of their lineup they can't play the new Paul McCartney song, Fuh You. The chorus sounds too much like Paul wants to bone you. I'm 100% here for horn dog Paul, fully emerging after 76 years, but the guy upstairs uh, are not having it. Although I guess the guy did write, why don't we do it in the road, which the station does play. How about you don't play new Paul McCartney singles because they suck? Frozen Summers writes, there is an alternate radio-friendly version which has is and has always been played on radio here in Australia where the second verse is replaced by Sting singing the chorus. I remember when I first saw an article about the song and the f -slur, I was very confused because I had never heard that version. I just listened to the copy of the song I have from Sultans of Swing, the very best of Dire Straits, and it is the radio-friendly edit. So is, is it possible that it has survived for those who aren't the f -slur dropping types can also play a different version, and those that want to trigger the libs can play the original. If it helps, I'm white. So I, I agree. I, I Here's what I... Here, let me read this last email, and then I will, I will reveal to you my personal revelation. Sean writes, just a couple of things, nothing very insightful. You mentioned the eight-minute length. There is a four-minute edit of the song, and I somehow never knew that the album version was eight minutes until today. I just listened to it for the first time eight minutes ago. My dad had this album, though, so I probably have heard it before now and just don't remember. I always skipped right to the industrial, right, right to industrial disease on the CD. Listening to the four-minute edit right after the album version, it, it does omit the F slur verse entirely. Then again, that's just the version I have, and maybe classic rock radio stations play the album version to pad out time. I definitely always heard, we've got to reach those <laughs> microwave ovens instead of the actual lyric that you quoted. I've always thought the word blister was the word pistol until today, and I never really questioned it because I was pretty young when I first heard the song. Lyrics can be weird. I have an apology to make to everybody. I'm going to bring it in for those of you watching either on Twitter or YouTube. I'm, I'm now zooming in so you can see, inspect the honesty on my face because I do have an apology to make to everybody. I have made a mistake. I made an assumption. And as we all know, when you assume... You make an ass out of you and me. 
considering the listenership and viewership of this show, yesterday, I made a lot of asses. Here was my assumption. I assumed something that I should never, and nobody should assume, that the rest of the country, let alone the rest of the world, is anything like Florida. That's my mistake. I made the mistake of thinking that the fact that my local radio station growing up and the emails that I've gotten from other South Floridians who have said that one big 105.9 in South Florida still does to this day, or at least as of two weeks ago, plays the eight-minute version of this song that includes the F-slur. Maybe I made an incorrect assumption. My life, this is the unkillable pop culture song. But for so many others that wrote in, it doesn't seem like that was the case. So, this is probably not an issue for the entire country, let alone the world. But in Florida, it certainly is. <laughs> in Florida, from then, now, forever, that little F slur is a millionaire. I want my I want my Well that ain't working These are the producers The Jan and PD Rave Non-specific Rock and Roll Martian Joe Acosta Will John H. Meyer James Bill Dustin I want you I want you, I want you to email me. Brum, 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 brum. Jerry Daly at Gmail. Oh, leave a comment on YouTube. We got Twitter and Instagram at Justin R. Young. Join the conversation at diamondclub.reddit. Dot com, everybody come and join the conversation. Folks, I'll see you tomorrow. High thoughts, everything else, till tomorrow. Please don't die. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>